Missiles are an excellent weapon choice for new players because they avoid some of the intricacies of the turret based systems. If you're using missiles you don't have to worry about things like angular or traversal velocity, you don't have to worry about tracking speeds, optimal range or accuracy fall off. It's simple, there's a lot less to worry about here, it's based purely on the size of your target and how fast the target is moving in an absolute value. Much easier to get your head around. Now that doesn't mean that they're a bad weapon system by any stretch, in fact the simplicity just carries across to all the different tonnages in EVE Online. If you want to be using missiles as a frigate pilot, as a cruiser pilot, as a battleship pilot, they're all excellent options. And in today's video, I'm going to be showcasing everything you need to know to get the best snark possible as a missile pilot. I'll be going over which skills you need to be looking at and training into, and we'll take a look at fitting two of the best missile ships for new pilots, the Minmata Republic's Breacher Frigate and the Kaldari State's Kestrel Frigate. Ahoy there folks, I'm Captain Benzie, let's jump right in. First of all then, let's cover the absolute basics of missiles. We're going to talk about the different names that they have, what the differences between the short and long range versions actually are, we'll have a look at the different types of ammunition used, and we will briefly talk about how they actually apply their damage to targets, but I have done more in-depth videos on a lot of those topics elsewhere. First of all then, the naming conventions. Missiles have a lot of different names in EVE Online, and if you're coming across from say EVE Echoes where everything is just small, medium or large missiles, small, medium or large torpedoes, things can get confusing. So to give a brief rundown, essentially if you are flying frigates or destroyers, you'll be using light missiles or rockets. If you're using cruisers or battle cruisers, you're going to be looking at heavy missiles or heavy assault missiles, and if you are flying battleships, you're going to be using either cruise missiles or torpedoes. There is some crossover and there are some other ones to talk about, but for the purposes of this video that covers the basics. Because this video is going to be focusing primarily on the Breacher and the Kestrel, we are of course going to be focusing on small missile systems, light missile launchers and rocket launchers, light missiles and rockets. Now what is the actual difference between these two? Well I've dragged a light missile launcher one and a rocket launcher one into the comparison tool just to give you a brief breakdown along with a scourge light missile and a scourge rocket and we'll talk more about the scourge bit in a moment. First of all the difference between light and rocket. So light missiles if we have a look at them, tech one, 10 second reload time but a 16 second rate of fire. This mean, this reload time means if you are changing your missiles for a different type of missile or if you've run out of ammunition and you need to reload, it's a 10 second delay before you can start firing again. The rate of fire is the duration between launching one missile and launching the next one. So if you launch a missile out of a light missile launcher, you have to wait 16 seconds before the system will launch a second missile. That is quite a long duration between. And of course, light missile launchers launch light missiles. Rocket launches, on the other hand, same reload speed as the light missiles of 10 seconds um, and a rate of fire this time of 5 seconds. That is considerably faster. That means that essentially you're going to launch a rocket and it's only going to be 5 seconds before another rocket gets launched. Another 5 seconds after that, a third rocket will be launched and that will have been 3 rockets launched before the light missile gets to launch a second one. Now if we actually look at the ammunition here for a moment, what is the difference between a Scourge light missile and a Scourge rocket? Well if we're looking at the damage types first of all here, you can see that a light missile does a whopping 83 hit points worth of damage compared to a rocket doing 33 hit points worth of damage. Well that means that the light missiles are more damaging, right? No, because of that rate of fire. This means in a 15 second window for example, if you were to launch both a light missile and a rocket launcher, activate both of those at the same time, then they are both going to launch. Five seconds later, the rocket launch is going to launch a second rocket. Five seconds after that, the rocket launch is going to launch its third rocket. A second after that, the light missile launcher finally gets its second one, but so on and so forth. So over a 15 second period, the, uh, the rocket launcher has launched three Scourge rockets doing a total of 99 hit points worth of damage, whereas in that same 15 second window the Scourge light missile has only done 83 hit points. Therefore over a period of time rockets have the higher damage profile. It's all due to that rate of fire essentially being significantly faster than the rate of fire of a light missile launcher. 
They also have different ranges. Now to calculate the range of a missile in EVE Online, you first need to know their maximum flight time and their maximum velocity. So we can look at these two side by side here, multiply these together to give us our range. So here, for example, with the Scourge Light Missile, we have a five second flight duration plus uh, multiplied by a velocity of 3,750 meters per second, which gives us a total range of 18,750 meters. That works out to basically 18.75 kilometers. On the other hand, if we were to have a look here at the rockets, you can see these only have a flight time of two seconds, and that is at a speed of 2.25 kilometers per second, 2,250 meters per second. That gives us a total range of 4,500 meters, 4.5 kilometers. So 4.5 kilometers for the rocket compared to 18.75 on the light missile. The light missiles have significantly larger range on this, worth bearing in mind. Finally, we come to application, and I'm not going to spend too long on this because I've done entire videos talking about how application works, but the basics as a missile pilot that you need to know is that your missile's total damage is theoretical, based on a very large stationary target. The faster your target is moving, the less percentage of your damage you will apply to it, and the smaller the target is, the less damage, again, you'll apply to it. So to get 100%, you need to have a target that is moving quite slow and is fairly large. This is where explosion velocity and explosion radius come in. Essentially, it's not exactly one-to-one -one here, but essentially, if a target is moving faster than 170 meters per second, or is smaller than 40 meters in signature radius, you're not gonna do the full 83 hit points worth of damage here. But again, the application calculation is a little bit more complex than that. It's something I've gone over in other videos. I will link in the description. What you need to know is that a smaller explosion radius is better and a faster explosion velocity is better. A faster explosion velocity can catch faster moving ships. A smaller explosion radius pinpoints that damage on a smaller ship. Obviously, if you are bigger, then, well, better, better. If the enemy ship is bigger than your explosion radius, then you're going to apply nicely to it, as long as it's not moving too fast for the explosion velocity. Here we can see that the difference between missiles and rockets is that rockets have a significantly smaller explosion radius, making them apply their damage much better against small targets than the light missiles do. But on the other hand, the light missiles do have a higher explosion velocity, which means they apply their damage slightly better to faster moving targets, worth bearing in mind there. Finally, I did promise I would talk about what the Scourge part of Scourge Light Missile or Scourge Rocket means. This is one of the big advantages of missiles in EVE Online. If you look at other weapon systems, they do multiple spreads of damage types. Energy turrets, for example, your lasers, those are going to be doing electromagnetic and thermal damage for the most part, and that is all that they will ever do. If you're using different types of hybrid turrets, they will always do kinetic and thermal damage. Missiles, on the other hand, can do any one of the four different types. So here we have Scourge rockets and Scourge light missiles. That means they do kinetic damage. Nova missiles and rockets are going to do explosive damage, Mjolnir will do electromagnetic, and Inferno will deal thermal damage, and that is exclusive. This means that you can pinpoint your opponent's weaknesses and use the specific missile to target that. If, for example, you're going up against Kaldari rats that have a weakness to kinetic damage, then Scourge missiles and rockets are going to be your choice. Whereas if you're going up against Minmatar angel rats, for example, that have a weakness to explosive damage, you're going to want to fit Nova light missiles or Nova rockets. Let's have a look at skills then next. If we open up the skill page and then head to skill catalog, there is a category in the bottom left here called missiles. If we click on this, this will bring up every single missile skill in the game. And obviously not all of these are going to be useful to you early on. If you are flying primarily missile frigates, then training into things like cruise missiles, not going to be particularly helpful or some of the XL weapon systems for capitals, for example. 
As such, there are a couple of things that we're going to be wanting to train into first, and some of the skill plans definitely talk about this if you're going to Enforcer into Kaldari and then the Kaldari Mission Runner, because that's aiming to get you into a Korax, which is a mission ship. This does have a lot of different missile skills down here that will help you start to fly that, and if you're looking at flying the Kestrel or the Breacher, these can be good things to start with. It should be noticed, uh, noted, however, the Breacher is a Minmatar ship, therefore you don't want Kaldari skills, like Kaldari Frigate 1, you'll be wanting the Minmatar skill versions, and it's the same if you then eventually want to go up into things like the Talwa, which is a Minmatar destroyer that uses missiles. But anyway, we're getting ahead of ourselves here. Looking at the skill page, there are some that are worth spending a few moments to talk about. Most importantly is Missile Launcher Operation. This is a basic operation of Missile Launcher Systems, a 2% bonus to Missile Launcher Rate of Fire per skill level. This absolutely is the kind of thing you want to be training pretty early, because that is going to affect almost all of your different uh, Missile Launcher uh, systems that you're going to be using. The same obviously applies here to rockets, skill with short range missiles, special 5% bonus to rocket damage per skill level, and light missiles being the alternative to that, skill with the manually targeted missiles, 5% bonus to light missile damage per skill level. Missile launcher operation is the generic one, then going into rockets and light missiles is going to help further if you're using the breacher or the kestrel or some other small uh, missile ship, something that like for example the Jaguar um, or various others of the small ships, frigates and destroyers that are going to be using missiles. We then also have the Rapid Launch skill. This is a 3% bonus to missile launcher rate of fire per level, essentially this is a DPS increase, it's going to be a useful skill to learn. Warhead Upgrades is another one to talk about here. It's a 2% bonus to all missile damage per skill level, regardless of the size. This is one of those skills that is going to carry between small, medium, and large vessels. If you do eventually want to start flying something like a Drake or some of the battleships like a Typhoon that uses missiles, then Warhead Upgrades is a generic missile skill. It will apply across to those as well. As will Missile Bombardment, which I need to come across to over here. This is a proficiency at long range missile combat, a 10% flight time bonus for missiles per level. This is the kind of skill that you're going to want to train if you want to use a kiting strategy. If you're going to be using light missiles and you want more range, then missile bombardment is absolutely a skill that you want to be looking into. That's not to say that if you're using rockets it's useless, far from, but obviously a 10% bonus to missiles flight time, um, a 10% bonus to a bigger number is going to be a bigger effect. It helps the light missiles more than it helps rockets. We then have Missile Projection over here. Missile Projection is a 10% bonus to all missiles maximum velocity per level, which again is another range increase, especially useful for those kiting builds. Kiting builds are when you're trying to keep your opponent at range um, and you're not getting right up close and personal and sort of doing tight orbits around things. If we head across then to Guided Missile Precision, I've got my notes here, sorry, there we are. Guided Missile Precision, this is a 5% decrease per level in the factor of signature radius for all missile explosions. Essentially, what this does is this is going to be sorting out the uh, explosion radius part of the missile application and is going to help you apply your damage to smaller targets better. Very useful if you're going to be going up against frigates or destroyers or other ships that have small signature radiuses and therefore you want this skill to make sure you are applying as much of your damage as possible. Of course, boosting your damage is all very well and good, but if you can't hit the target with it, it's kind of wasted. So this will help you apply that damage better. And finally then, Target Navigation Prediction. This one again is a 10% decrease uh, per level in regards to the target velocity aspect of the missile application. This essentially makes missiles more effective against faster targets. Again, all to do with that application, both Guided Missile Precision and Target Navigation Prediction are all about making sure that you are getting the very most out of the uh, out of the missiles that you are firing at, out of the missiles you're launching, that they are applying as much of their damage as possible to the target. It's also worth noting that once you do get, for example, 
um, like your light missile systems up here. You can start going into light missile specialization um, and rocket specialization as well. This will help you to push into those even further, dealing additional damage with higher rates of fire, so on and so forth, but those are much more along the advanced end of things when it comes to missiles. Those were the basic skills that I've talked about. Do make sure that the uh, you don't just completely ignore the application ones. These are more important, arguably, once you are at larger ship sizes. The bigger your ship, the more important the guided missile precision and target navigation prediction skills become, but don't overlook them if you're only using frigates and destroyers. They will still help improve your damage. Another big tip that I give people regarding skills when they're trying to figure out which skills to aim for is to head across to the ship tree. Look for the ship that you are looking to fly. So for example, in this video we're going to be talking about the Kestrel, but what if you also wanted to be flying the Corax? Well, we can go into the Corax, we can come across to its mastery tab here, and this will give us an idea of some of the skills that we should be training. Specifically for the purposes of this video, the small missile skills here, you can see it tells you to get missile launcher operation up to three, then all of the other skills that I mentioned up to one. Once we go to mastery two, the small missiles, again, it kind of is get that up to four, and then start filling these ones out to three, and so on. As we get to the higher levels, this will really start to talk about some of the more advanced skills like here the rocket specialization light missile specialization and talking about maxing out different skills in a different order don't take this as an absolute gospel i was talking to a friend the other day um, regarding the mastery systems here and some of these are specifically pve skills and some of them are specifically pvp skills and it's pointless wasting your skill points on skills that don't actually do anything for you because you're not going to be using them like training thermodynamics is all well and good if you want to be using the overheat mechanic but if you're never using it don't bother training it. If you want to be going into PVE, then your different magnetometric sensors and things like that are going to be useful skills, and it will mention some of these in here, like gravimetric target managing. This is primarily here, this bit here, the gravimetric sensor compensation, primarily a PVP skill. You won't need that for PVE. So take it with a pinch of salt, but the mastery system can give you a brilliant idea of what you're actually looking for in regards to getting the most out of a particular vessel. Let's have a look then at fitting out a Breacher. The Breacher is the Minmatar Republic's missile frigate. It's a combat frigate with primarily skills in using missiles. If we have a look at its bonuses here, go into its traits, you can see that Minmatar frigate skill gives it a 5% bonus to light missile and rocket rate of fire, and a 7.5% bonus to shield booster amount. Now, because of this shield booster increase, I tend to think of the Breacher as being a bit more baited towards brawling, getting up into your opponent's grill and hitting them with uh, rockets rather than light missiles. That's not to say that it can't be used with light missiles. This is entirely up to you how you choose to fit it, but I wanted to showcase a fit that was based on using the rockets first of all. So for this particular fit, I've gone for rocket launches in the high slots. And it's worth noting that I've given this a an upgraded fit using alpha only gear. Um, but if you are still starting out, just take these down to the meta level that is available to you. So rather than arbalest rocket launcher ones, if you're starting out standard rocket launcher ones are more than good enough. And I will talk about those as we go ahead. Using Arbalest rocket launches just gives us a DPS increase a little bit here, um, faster rate of fire and more damage. I've gone for Nova rockets here because of course I am in Minmatar space, I'm currently Dr. Heck, therefore most of the agent missions that I go for and any of the ratting encounters around me will tend to be against Angel rats, and Angel rats are weak to explosive damage, so Nova rockets help with that. For the mid slots, I've gone for a medium clarity ward enduring shield booster. Again, a medium shield booster will be fine here to start off with. You can then start training up the skills that will allow you into the medium clarity ward later on. It's a bit more expensive, but it is obviously a lot more effective. This is a shield booster, allows us to repair our shields out in space, um, but it is quite capacitor hungry. 
Now, we are actually capacitor stable, but that is partly thanks to running a capacitor booster here. Again, small FRX com uh, compact capacitor booster here. A standard small capacitor booster would do the job just fine. Shove in a couple of cap booster 200s. When you use this, it will inject a load of juice into your capacitor that you can then use to shield boost yourself all the way back up to full shields. Um, before that cap boost runs out and then if you need to you can just inject another one later on so on and so forth that's the idea of a cap booster it essentially allows you to run your capacitor a little bit hot and not worry too much about it for propulsion here a monopropellant enduring afterburner or again a standard one mega newton afterburner will do the job here this is an upgrade that is going to help out a bit more allows us to move faster if we're moving faster we are harder to hit we're a small target already being small and fast moving means we are difficult to hit both turrets and missiles Finally, for the mid slots, an X5 Enduring Stasis Weber Fire. Again, you can go for a standard Stasis Weber Fire 1 here. This is just to hold your targets in position, slow them down a little bit. That helps with your rocket application. They're going to do more damage to the target um, because that target is now slower moving. For the low slots, I've gone for a Missile Guidance Enhancer and a Ballistic Control System. Again, this is affecting the application of the missiles and straight up the damage that they're going to be doing. Additional damage, additional application to the target. Now, I have kind of put a Damage Control 2 on here. This is, again, this could be a Damage Control 1, same as these can obviously be just a standard Missile Guidance Enhancer or a Ballistic Control System 1. Essentially, a Damage Control doesn't do all that much against shields. It is useful because ultimately here I'm going to get stacking penalties, but you can, if you if you like, swap this out for another Ballistic Control computer. Um, having, a, having another Ballistic Control System in the low slots here is going to increase your DPS. Try it with a damage control first of all, see what your survivability is like. If you're finding that you're surviving just fine, then swap a damage control out for another ballistic control system and you'll be doing more damage. For the rigs up here, I've gone for an EM Shield Reinforcer, just so I take a little bit less damage from Electromagnetics. Um, a small core defense capacitor safeguard in both of the final slots here just means that this here, uh, the Medium Clarity Ward Enduring Shield Booster, is consuming a little bit less capacitor. Now again, if you are just starting out and you might not be able to fit all of these, look at a standard Rocket Launcher 1, a Medium Shield Booster 1, a one mega newton afterburner one, a standard stasis weber fire one, a small capacitor booster one, damage control one, ballistic control system one, and missile guidance enhancer one. You can go with all of the ones and then just gradually upgrade those over time to help clear that little bit faster. It's worth noting you can also put drones in the breacher here. If you do understand drones, then absolutely go for it. It's extra damage, but drones are something I will cover in a future video about how to use these. Um, for the time being though, if you're brand new to the game, you wanna be focusing on missiles, just ignore the fact that this ship can even use drones for now. You wanna be a, like, getting your missile skills up first and foremost. Once those are up, then we can come back and start talking about drones. So do check out the drone video eventually. But for now, that's your basic fit. And this will do the lower tier uh, mission encounter agents really, really easily. So you can go to your local agency, grab a load of enforcer missions and go off and do those quite comfortably in this. It's fast to warp, it's quick to move, it's surprisingly survivable, and it does a good whack of damage. If you've started out as a Kaldari pilot, however, the Kestrel is arguably the better choice for you to go for as a missile pilot. If we open up the Kestrel's information page here, we can see that the Kaldari frigate skill gives it a bonus here, 5% bonus to light missile and rocket damage, and a 10% bonus to light missile and rocket maximum velocity. Maximum velocity is additional range to those missiles. Therefore, the Kestrel, I would tend to go towards more of a ranged build because getting a 10% per level bonus to 18 kilometers range is a lot more than getting a 10% per level bonus to a 4.5 kilometer range, right? That's my theory. That's not to say you can't do a Kestrel with rockets, but I want to showcase one using light missiles. And of course, that damage bonus there uh, is just a nice big damage boost overall. The Kestrel also has four high slots, giving it just better damage than the Breacher overall. 
Now for this again, I've sh I'm the, the fit I've got on screen here is available to Alpha Pilots. It is a fully upgraded version of the ship. That said, you may obviously want to take this down some meta levels based on the skills that you currently have, and I will list those as we go. So for example here, I've gone for an Arbalest Compact Light Missile Launcher. If you're just starting off, then a standard Light Missile Launcher 1 is more than good enough. You just upgrade to the Arbalests when you can afford to. I've also fitted Scourge light missiles onto this ship, because if you are a Kaldari pilot, chances are most of the agent missions you're going to be running are against Gurustus pirates' enemies, and the Gurustus pirates are weak to kinetic damage. Therefore, fitting Scourge missiles, we do more damage to those enemies. For the mid slots, I've gone for a small shield booster 2. Obviously, a small shield booster 1 is a great starting point here. This allows us to repair any incidental damage we take. Secondly, for propulsion, a 5 mega newton quad uh, lithium fluoride restrained micro warp drive. Again, standard 5 mega newton warp drive will do the job here. This is just a better version of that. Um, this is going to allow us to keep range better. What we're essentially going to do against our opponents is set our range to just inside our missile's maximum range. You can see that the maximum flight range here is 55 kilometers, so I would probably set myself to keep distance at something like 50 kilometers, maybe 52, um, and then use the micro warp drive to help keep that range. If something starts getting close, you can just pull away um, and keep it at that distance so that nothing gets to hit you, but your missiles outrange and hit them back. A Missile Guidance Computer 2, or Missile Guidance Computer 1 if that's all you can fit, is another great thing to go for here. Make sure you fit the Missile Range script. Um, again, you can choose different types of scripts to go into Guidance Computers. You'll want a Missile Range script for this to get that additional boost to your range. That's kind of the fit we're going for. And then a Cap Recharger into the final mid slot. Again, this can be Cap Recharger 2 or a Cap Recharger 1 if that's all you've got available. You'll notice that this does deplete fairly fast. We're not capacitor stable, but if I were to simulate this for a moment and actually turn off the micro warp drive there for a moment, you'll see that if the module is offline, i.e. not being used or just online there, we've got 3 minutes 14 and that's with the shield booster active as well. So if we take the shield booster off, if we're not actually activating either of these modules, we are completely capacitor stable, thanks to the Cap Recharger there. The two low slots, I've gone for Ballistic Control Systems. Again, I've gone Ballistic Control System 2. You can, co uh, can go Ballistic Control System 1. This is just additional damage. The more damage you're doing, the faster you clear through those anomalies, the better things are going to go for you. In order to fit these, although you are going to need a small processor overclocking unit in the rigs, Tier 1 is absolutely fine. This gives you just enough here to fit everything in that you need to. Um, get that fit. If you're having issues fitting everything, fit this first, then start fitting all the other modules around. If you're still having issues, it means you really need to work on your basic ship command skills and your engineering skills in order to get your power grid up a little bit better. Sorry, your CPU up a little bit higher. CPU is the one that you're going to be struggling with on this fit, not your power grid. We then have a small capacitor control circuit that just helps us maintain a capacitor stability without the uh, the shield booster or the warp drive running. And a small electromagnetic shield reinforcer just helps bring up the electromagnetic resistance here to take a little bit less damage. I suppose the next question is, if you're enjoying flying missile combat vessels, where do you go from here? And that's a pretty complex question with a lot of different variables, but I'm going to try and do my best to tackle it as briefly and as effectively as I can here. The first point to note is that if you're enjoying flying missile ships, then most of your options are going to be in the Kaldari State or the Minmata Republic ship tree. Those are where most of your options lie, but there are some elsewhere that we will talk about in a brief moment as well. So the first thing to then really consider is, are you enjoying small missiles specifically? Are you enjoying missile frigates specifically? And if the answer to that is yes, you do have other options. If you want to stay within the frigate branches of the ship trees, there are missile options that we haven't discussed yet. 
In the Kaldari State Ship Tree, for example, we have the Condor. This is a tackle frigate. It's fast moving. It's got bonuses to things like propulsion jamming, like uh, stasis webifiers. Designed primarily for PvP, but doesn't mean it's useless in PvE either. If you fancy being in a slightly smaller, faster vessel, the Condor may be for you. And if you really enjoy that playstyle and end up going into things like PvP, specifically in fleets, you might enjoy going into the Interceptors like the Crow. This is a very fast moving ship that is designed to catch an enemy, hold it in place whilst you do your damage with missiles and whilst your, uh, the fleet around you uh, uh, come in and apply their damage as well. It's worth noting that the Crow is a fairly expensive ship. You're going to need to train into Interceptors as well in order to get there. There is another ship we can look at before getting that far up the ship tree, and that is our Navy Frigate. In this case, the Kaldari Navy Hookbill. This gets bonuses to light missiles and rockets, as you can see here, and it is a pretty powerful ship. I've seen a lot of people run Hookbills in things like Abyssal Dead Spaces and in Agent Missions, as well as PvP as well. There are options there for you if that's the kind of thing you're looking for. It's worth noting that on the other side of the Interceptors we have the Assault Frigates. Assault Frigates are a bit tankier, they're sort of the heavy frigates, not quite destroyers but they do a lot of damage, they can take a decent amount of firepower return for a frigate at least, and the Kaldari State has the Hawk. Now I love the Hawk, this is one I actually use for Abyssal Dead Spaces quite a bit. It's very powerful, it's got a good amount of tank, a good amount of damage, a lot of versatility, and in Dark Abyssal Dead Spaces it does surprisingly well. Now, of course, I mentioned it's not just the Kaldari ship tree. If you are a Minmatar pilot enjoying the Breacher, for example, you might want to start looking at the Minmatar Republic ship tree as well. Now, here, the Navy frigate isn't a missile ship. It's small projectile turrets, and the same goes for both of their interceptors. But there is also the Vigil fleet issue. Now, this is a bit of an unusual ship, but it, in that it is designed straight around rockets. But if you're enjoying the rocket playstyle, the Vigil fleet issue is definitely an option for you, and if you like the concept of assault frigates, you have one of my absolute favourites, the Jaguar. Now the Jaguar is a PvP powerhouse, but it does also work in Abyssals. I've actually run the Sisters of Eve epic arc using a Jaguar as well. There's a lot of stuff that can be done with this. It's a surprisingly versatile frigate, and it uses the Rifter body, and who doesn't love the Rifter? Who doesn't want to fly a Rifter? Even if you're a missile pilot, you can fly a Rifter, which is pretty cool, right? Like, like the Jaguar is definitely up there as one of those ships you might be interested in. And if you're considering sticking with frigates and wanting to go to bigger missiles, yeah, there are also stealth bombers. Stealth bombers like the Hound, or in the Kaldari ship tree, we have the Manticore, which is technically an upgraded breacher for the Hound, and the Manticore is an updated Kestrel. These are both stealth bombers, and these have big damage bonuses to torpedoes. They are using torpedoes, which are essentially the battleship equivalent of rockets. So that in itself, for PvP at least, is a very powerful ship that if you enjoy missiles you may want to train into. You're going to need to train the covert ops skills and you're going to want to train into bombs and obviously torpedoes as well, um, but any of the generic missile skills that you've trained so far will work for that. It's also worth noting that even things like the uh, the Galente Nemesis and indeed the Amarian uh, Purifier, these are stealth bombers as well. They get bonuses from torpedoes and bombs just the same, so if you can fly a stealth bomber for the Kaldari or the Mimitar, all you would need to train is the Amar or Galente or whatever frigate bonus in order to be able to fly all of the stealth bombers and give yourself some versatility there. Now, whilst we're here in the Amar ship tree, it's also worth talking about one of their assault frigates, the Vengeance. Now, the Vengeance is a Carnid ship. It's not pure Amarian. They have these really cool sort of black color schemes to them and that you can kind of see here on screen, but these are missile ships as well and worth looking into. It's an assault frigate with missiles, so you've now got the Hawk, you've got the Jaguar, and you've got the Vengeance all as options for you here. Bonuses specifically to rocket damage and light missile and rocket launcher rate of fire. This again is primarily a rocket vessel. 
So those are your frigate options in the main Empire trees, but there are alternatives as well in frigates. For the Gurstus Pirates, there is the Worm. This is going to require you to train Kaldari Frigate and Galente Frigate. This will give you bonuses to uh, the missile damage here, kinetic and thermal missile damage from the Worm, but also you'll be wanting to train drone skills to use the Worm fully effectively as well. This is one of my absolute favourite ships in the game. It does require missile and drone skills, Galente and Kaldari uh, Frigate skills to fly. It's pretty skill intensive, but it's so versatile and powerful. Powerful. For Abyssal Dead Spaces, this is genuinely one of the powerhouses. And slightly more on the PvP side of things, in the Mordu's Legion ship tree, we have the Gama. Again, a missile skill ship here, using Kaldari Frigate and Galente Frigate bonuses. Um, pure missile damage this time around, you're not worrying about having to train into uh, drones alongside this. This is primarily a PvP ship, as you can see by the bonuses to Warp Scramblers and Warp Disruptors, um, but again, it does have some PvE application as well. Now that's if you want to stay within frigates, but if you want to move up the ship tree, then things get a lot more complex, and this I'm going to have to go over a little bit faster. Obviously the next step up from the Breacher or the uh, the Kestrel is going to be a Destroyer. Now in the, in the Kaldari State Ship Tree, we have the Korax, which is a Missile Destroyer, and of course as we go up the tree here as well, we've got things like the Stork as well, which uses light missiles, as does the Jackdaw. The Jackdaw is kind of the ultimate PvE destroyer using missiles, very much a ship you might decide you want to head to. It's pretty complex, I'll probably do an entire video dedicated to the Jackdaw at some point in the future. In the Mimitar Republic ship tree, you've got the Talwar once you hit the uh, Destroyer tier. Um, this is a little bit more PvP oriented than the Korax, but still can do dead spaces and things like that. Can be useful for ratting, and uh, this goes up to the Bifrost. Don't worry about the Svipal. Svipal is projectile turrets, not missiles. But then as we start going up further, we can start looking at things like cruisers. And for missile cruisers, again, you're now training out not so much the light missiles and rockets. You're going to be looking at heavy missiles and heavy assault missiles. For things like the Caracal, that is an option for you. Um, a little bit higher up, we have the Osprey Navy issue and the Caracal Navy issue. There are some more options up the ship tree here. And at Battle Cruiser, you start to look at things like the Drake, the Eponymous Drake being an option there as a missile battle cruiser. And then at Battleship, of course, we have things like the Raven. And above the Raven, one of the most popular uh, PvE missile boats, the Golem. Something to definitely consider aiming for there. The Mimitar ship tree gets a little bit thinner as we go higher up. Looking at missiles, it starts to go more cannon related. Um, but we do have things like the Bellicose here. Bellicose uses light missiles, heavy missiles, and heavy assault missiles. Under the recon ships, we do have, I believe, there we are, the Rapier, which again is a missile ship, but that's kind of it that you're looking at here. Once you go up into Battle Cruiser, you've got the Cyclone, the Cyclone Fleet issue. And above that, we have the Claymore. These are all missile ships as well. And at Battleship, you have the Typhoon. I love the Typhoon. This is a really cool battleship that uses missiles as well. It's actually surprisingly fast. It's pretty much a battle cruiser by anyone else's standards, but those are there as well. And again, this does carry into those other trees that I mentioned. If we go back to the Gurustus Pirates, then we have the Healer and we have the Rattlesnake. These are missile and drone ships that you can look to skill into. And in Mordu's League, we then have the Orthrus and the Bar Guest, both of which are missile ships that you can have a look at there as well. There are other options as well, don't take that as a be-all end-all, those are just some suggestions as to where you might want to look if you're enjoying flying missiles. Do let me know which direction you would like to go, and if you have any questions at all regarding missiles, any of the ships I've mentioned, or just EVE Online in general, ask in the comment section down below, come join the Catskull Discord linked in the description of this video, ask questions, I'm more than happy to help, suggest some video options for me as well. I'd love to know what you guys think, what you're enjoying and how you're finding all of this. Otherwise, folks, that's all for today's lesson. Thank you for sticking through right to the end. Happy sailing and see you in New Eden.